This paradigm is a world view of linearity. You've got a notion of Charles Darwin, the evolution of species. You've got this chemical soup and then a wee thing got a pseudopod together and then uh, a bit more joined in, a wee bit symbiosis and got two pseudopods and then the pseudopods started climbing out the soup and then they all kind of got a bit of skin on them and then they started laying eggs and there were chickens or whatever and chickens and eggs and, and then they all started flying about and then uh, they evolved out into the dinosaurs and they got wiped out and then the wee furry apes came out and then they all, you know, eventually grew eyes and stuff like that because eyes are very complicated and they all sort of like start to swing through the trees and then eventually they came up the trees into the African savannah and then they all laid down and died in a nice way so that one day Dr. Leakey could come along and discover them all. But the latest Pope of Darwinism is a guy in Oxbridge called Richard Dawkins and he's written this wonderful book called Climbing Mount Improbable. So it starts off with the chemical soup and then a wee cell and then the old story about climbing the big mountain of probability of natural selection and finally at the top of Mount Probable you've got your eye. I've got my eye, I can see now, I can work a computer, I'm alright. I mean, he's a wonderfully respected guy. However, one of his Oxbridge fellows, um, a guy called Brian Goodwin, has produced evidence through mathematical modelling that the eye has evolved and devolved to suit whatever probability came up, to suit the context, basically. The eye will evolve and devolve depending on the context. If you don't need an eye, it will devolve. If you need an eye, it will evolve, it will emerge. And the whole thing is, is that this stuff about this slow, linear progress up the track of improbabilities, the reality of the situation is, is that stuff emerges quickly really quickly, it spontaneously emerges to suit whatever environment there is. It's called emergence. But in fact, if you look at the, the annals of the Santa Fe Institute, santafe.edu, there's a whole pile of research into emergence. And that this notion of emergence was known to the ancient Hindus 10,000 BC. That's the same guys that are writing about, you know, build your own spaceship and stuff like that, with the motors and stuff. So. This whole thing about this linear paradigm of got your blinkers on and look at the track in front of you, they keep removing it from the context. The context for the eye isn't the fact that if we keep going we'll eventually get one, which is what Dawkins and company and Darwin are saying, that we'll eventually evolve an eye because there are pressures, but we'll get there from a slow, slow, slow plod. No, it happens quickly. It happens quickly because we're talking about chaos, we talk about emergence, that stuff will just happen. It happens. And this whole notion that it just happens completely turns Darwin's theories on its head, really. So it's scary. I mean, the fact that the fossil record, I mean, if you look at it, you've got basically there were two forms of primitive man. One was like Homo neanderthalus, the big bulky ape man that you sort of see with a kind of fur coat and sort of big teeth and the you know, Neanderthal, Homo Neanderthalus with the bone and stuff like that. And the idea was that eventually he got to Homo Neanderthalus and then Homo Neanderthalus, which had a very small brain, suddenly after a suitable period of uh, evolutionary calm, out comes a superior species. That's not true! They found that Cro-Magnon man, which is the next evolutionary step, was living alongside Homo Neanderthalus. It's like saying that in the same year that the Wright brothers built their contraption out of matchwood and newspaper, they built the Concorde as well.